world of tomorrow will be filled with wondrous things. What about life? Your life and mine. Will we change? Will we be happier? You know, some persons contend that the drama of daily life remains constant and will remain so forever. I wonder. Perhaps together we can find a clue to the answer on tonight's Tales of Tomorrow. Better hope they are, Bernie. Oh, what does that mean? You know very well. We were due here 15 days ago, with the safari and the supplies. I see. I suppose it's my fault. The yes. bear has deserted us. Yes. All your fault. As a guide, you ought to know how to handle your men. But you are vicious, inhuman toward them. I don't blame them in the least for deserting us. And what's more? When we get back to civilization, I'm going to press charges against you. <laughs> Are you now? Really? Yeah. Well, let me tell you something. When we get back to civilization, there'll be charges pressed. Only it'll be I who'll do the pressing. When I'm finished, you'll see every last deserter strung up to the highest scaffold in the north. That I promise. Oi! Oi! Get a move on! Get a move on. Stop it! Isn't it enough you've got him carrying your gear, too? Well, here's the crater. Tom! Susan! They were here, they'd have answered long ago. We only had food enough for ten days at the most. I hope we're not too late. Well, there's one way to find out, for sure. idea. Looks like a dried out watermelon. If it were 100 times smaller, I'd almost think it was a cocoon. A cocoon? Is this a strange specimens of the meteorite? Papers, notes, instruments? They're all here. Plankton would never leave these things here. Perhaps they decided to travel light. Never. 
Not blame for it. He'd have given up taking food to save space for these specimens. What's your theory? They must still be here. Somewhere. of an animal has drained them of every drop of blood. Where's Susan? Gordon, was this Professor Blankforth all right? What do you mean? Listen to what he says here. August 3rd, the creature died this night. Conclusion, it could not have been of earthly origin. By some miracle, the meteorite brought it here. A sample of life beyond our universe in the form of a monstrous, invisible, Invisible insect. <laughs> now I ask you. Where'd you find that? Over there. Let me see it. Why, it's blank. It's there. July 23. Pearson discovered a gigantic cocoon this morning at the crater siding. A few hours later in the work hut, the cocoon released a fully developed Invisible Lamego, roughly the size of a large dog. <laughs> we managed to subdue the creature and found it securely. Since the creature is invisible, we have no way of determining its shape or form. Pearson suggests that we chloroform it and make a plaster cast of it. That way we'd have a solid, dimensional figure. July 23, evening. The plaster model is finished. It is the most dreadful insect I have ever seen. <laughs> my, my, the cocoon released an invisible insect about the size of a large dog. <laughs> July 28th. This morning I discovered what the creature feeds on. Its exclusive nutriment is human blood. There must be a plaster model of it somewhere around here. <laughs> I'll lay you come to one. You'll never find it.
The boy! Hurry! Not me! What? Who knows what's out there? Risk my neck for his! Never! Oh. anything? I saw nothing. Yet I know. I know something was there. Uh, uh, run away, Hog. There are hundreds of them. Uh, hundreds of them. you see and hear on Tales of Tomorrow are about people who face strange and unexplainable problems. These stories are created by those whose curiosity about the future and about the universe around us is vivid and compelling. Many of the situations in which the characters find themselves may seem improbable, but are they impossible? Nobody really knows. We do know that the universe that surrounds us is an enormous mystery. Our stories try to break through the barrier of life as we know it to discover in our imaginations what life beyond may be like. all gone. Uncle John went out to find some more. It was night. Tom and I were asleep. We didn't even know he'd left. Then Tom went after him. We're fools for staying here. We should make a run for it. Mr. Borden, please don't leave me. Oh, no, of course I won't, Susan. Miss, you've got to tell me. Is it true that there are invisible things like that outside? Yes. Yes, it's true. You can't see them, but they're there. Waiting. Oh, it's waiting. Night you can hear them. Hundreds of them scratching, growling, trying to get in. Oh, no, Susan, Susan. Hadn't she been through enough? What about me? Do you think I liked this? They're invisible. How do we know they're not in here already? Well, there are dozens of places right in this room where they could be hiding. If they were in this room, Brannigan, I'm sure we'd know about it by now. Oh, really? Well, I'm not taking any chances. That's they're just waiting for us. Biding their time. 
Susan, we'll be here all night. I feel sure we're perfectly safe, but if you want, I can give you a sedative. I don't want to sleep. I don't ever want to sleep. There's them out there. There must be dozens out there. We'll never be able to get out of here. What is it? They started again. Now, don't worry, Susan. We're absolutely safe. Oh, no, we're not. I told you we should have made a run for it. Oh, well, nobody stopped you. Look. Well, one second, it in. Brannigan, hurry. Barricade that hole. Susan. Over here, quickly. It's in the room. It's in the room. They're in here. We can't see them, but they're in here somewhere. Look for any sign of motion. Keep your eyes on everything. If you even think you see something move, fire. Insecticide. Incredible, but then why not? After all, they are insects. Now look, there's a whole crate of them here. Suit! It's our only chance. We'll each carry as many of these 
bombs as we can. We'll release a constant spray as we go. Even if it doesn't kill them, it'll stop them from following. With luck, we should make the river by morning. Come on, Susan. <laughs> down a fleet of planes and spray this entire area. Please. from Earth, is there life in the universe? Nobody really knows. But it is possible that in the space beyond us, there is life, that there are other suns giving warmth and life to worlds like ours. In the years, in the ages, in the eons ahead, we may find the answer to our questions. We may find that in the space beyond us, beyond the stars, there are worlds with life far richer than our own. Tales of Tomorrow speculates about such a future. Next week, same time, same station, another gripping story on Tales of Tomorrow. <laughs>